in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. shall be taken away off of thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing it is the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage yes. folks the yoke of, that, that holds you that binds you it is the anointing it's the anointing that sets us free and makes us whole yes hallelujah glory hallelujah. to god glory to god thank you now lord. look with me to first john Chapter 1, verse 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing, say anointing, anointing. which you have received of him, that's somebody you received this anointing from Jesus, it is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Say the anointing, the anointing is, is, is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It says in Acts how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The word power is dunamis. It means miraculous power. Yes. It's the anointing that, that breaks the yoke of all kinds of bondage. It's yes. the anointing that sets you free from sin, sickness, poverty. It's the anointing that delivers us and sets us free. It's the anointing that when we begin to praise God and worship Him that falls in this place. Yes. And it's not the house that's anointed. It is God. It's God's yes. people. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's yes. in you. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. God used to live in temples made with hands. But now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We need to spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That way we build ourselves up in the most holy faith according to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It says we, we are built up. It says we are edified when we pray in, a, in unknown tongues. It says only God understands us. Yes. For no man understands us. So when we pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost, it build, He builds us up. Strong. In the Lord. In Jude it says, build up yourself in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. But it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that will give us revelation and understanding. It's Jesus he gave us the Holy Spirit so we can do the works that he did. Say, I can do, I can do. the works that Jesus the did. Works that Jesus did. And one time the Lord spoke this to me. He said, to do the works that I did, you have to do the works that I did. In other words, we have to do what Jesus did if we want to be able to have the same, or if we want to have, be able to have the same ability to do those things that, that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth to do. Mm -hmm. If you want to lay hands on the sick, you've got to spend time in prayer like Jesus did. How many of y'all spent time in prayer? Don't raise your hands. Look with me. Jesus spent lots of time in prayer. First, whenever he got filled with the Holy Ghost, when Jesus was baptized in water, he said he, he went to John the Baptist. He said, I want you to, be, you to baptize me. And John the Baptist said, I need to be baptized by you. Jesus said, no, it, it, we must do this to fulfill all righteousness. 
And Jesus was the Passover lamb. And under the old covenant, there were certain, like sin sacrifices, they had to be washed. And so that was what Jesus was doing, a ceremonial washing to cleanse him for, for, for the law. It was, it was a law thing. And Jesus, he was going to be the sacrificial lamb of God as he hung on the cross. And he bare our sins in his own body on the tree. That he may redeem us and set us free from sin. Yes. Jesus came to deliver man from sin. Jesus wants you to be free from sin. Amen. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And he wants to set you free. Because he wants you to be alive and not dead. At the end of, of, at the end of Romans chapter 7, Paul said, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he answered, only through Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus Christ we can be delivered from death. And the wages of sin is death. So if we can be delivered from the wages of sin, we can be delivered from the power of sin by receiving Jesus Christ and making him truly Lord of our life and turning away from our old ways and turning to him. And he comes into us. Yes. Jesus comes into us Thank you, Lord. and makes us alive unto God. He gives us a new life because of what he did at Amen. Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he, sent, then he went to heaven. And he sent down the Holy Ghost. So that the same anointing that was on him could be on us. Glory to could God. be on us. You can have the same anointing that Jesus had. Hallelujah. Because it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And then on the day of Pentecost, he poured out the Holy Ghost on all flesh. That's all flesh. That's everybody. Amen. On all flesh. Everybody. But we have to be born again to receive the Holy Ghost. We have to be saved. The world cannot receive the Holy Ghost, Jesus said. We're going to read those scriptures if we have time in time. But the world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. You, you have to believe. You have to have faith in God. You have to receive Jesus as your Lord. After Jesus rose from the dead, he went to his disciples. And he breathed on them. And they were born again when he breathed on them. And then he said, receive the Holy Ghost. Now, they couldn't receive the Holy Ghost yet because he had been sent down from heaven. John the Baptist says, a man can receive nothing unless the first be given him from heaven. So, see, God sent Jesus into the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Yes. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world or put the world to death. But God sent the world, son into the world that the world through him might be delivered, might be saved. Say saved means delivered. Saved means delivered. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus you. came to save you or deliver you from sin. The angel of the Lord appeared to, uh, to Jesus, uh, Joseph, the, the, the father of Jesus, the earthly father. And he said, be not, because he was, he was going to divorce his wife. Because, I mean, he was, a, he was a spouse to be married to her. And then it was a legally binding, a spouse was a legally binding thing. Now you, you can just dump somebody if you're engaged to him. But back then, you had to actually go get a divor divorce if you were engaged to somebody. And, and so, so he was going to put her away privately because he found out she was pregnant. But then, the whole, then God, God spoke to him by an angel in, in a dream. And he said, Be not afraid to take unto thee Mary for thy wife, for that which is in her is of the Holy Ghost. And, and he, he, she shall bear a son, and you shall name his name Jesus, for he shall say, Sozo, deliver his people from their sins. Jesus came to deliver people from their sins. And then he enables you, once you're born again, then you're supposed to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. But Jesus prayed. Say, Jesus prayed. Jesus, Jesus prayed. prayed. Anyhow, anyhow, Jesus, after he was filled with the Holy Ghost, John the Baptist baptized him. And then when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And then when the Holy Spirit filled him, before, before that, Jesus never, ever did a miracle. The first 30 years of his life, Jesus never did a miracle. But once he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Spirit began to lead him. The first thing the Holy Spirit led him to do was to go into the wilderness and pray 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. And so Jesus went into the wilderness and he prayed. For, why did he go to the wilderness? Because there's no distractions. That's right. The Bible says we should get alone with God. It says get in your prayer closet. It just means get in a, in a quiet place before God. Yes. Where you can hear from God, where He can hear, where He can, where you can be in a place where you can hear from God. We need to do that because Jesus did it. We're supposed to be imitators of Christ. We're supposed to do what Jesus did, right? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Then, then turn with me. And then so he fasted and prayed for 40 days. And at the end of that, he was hungry. I mean, he, did, he still drank water through that period. But he, did, he didn't eat any food. Now, you can go at Dilly for a long time without eating food. As long as you stay, as long as you get enough water. But you can't, if, you go over, if you go over three days without water, your body starts, starts getting totally dehydrated. And you can't live much over three days without water. You, you start dying if you go over three days without water. But you can go for over 30 days without food. Did you know that? Your body can go. Now, some of us would probably, probably should do some of that. <laughs> Come on. Fasting. I mean, fasting is good, actually good for your body. Yes, it is. God's good. And I, I eat almost every day. I, I only go like on a fast if the Lord directs me to do that. But, uh, but we probably should do that more regularly because it's good for our bodies. Amen. But Jesus, he went into the wilderness, and at the end of those 30 to 40 days, the devil came and tempted him several times, three times. But every time the devil tempted him, he resisted the devil with the word of God. You know, the devil comes and tempts us, right? The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all ways, even as we are, yet without sin. In other words, everything you've ever been tempted to do, Jesus was tempted to do. Do you know how I know that? Because the Bible says so. He was tempted in all ways, even as we are, yet without sin. Now, because he resisted temptation, then he comes and lives in us. Now, we can resist temptation. We need to spend time in prayer, though, if Amen. we want to do the works that Jesus did. Look with me to uh, Luke chapter 5. We're going to read verses 15 through 17. Luke chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. So, so much more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. When Jesus went and prayed, he got away from everybody else. He got alone with Father God. Why did he do that? Because then he could hear from Father God. He spent a lot of time in prayer. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by and were coming to every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power, say the power. power. The word power here is dunamis. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Jesus spent time in prayer, and then he got the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, where he was flowing in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Why? Because he spent time in prayer. And then turn with me to Mark chapter 1, verses 34 and 35. Talking about Jesus again. And he healed many that were sick of divers, means all kinds of diseases, and cast out many devils. And suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while, say a great while. A great while. A great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there, prayer. Jesus would get up way before daylight. Yes. And he'd get out alone with God. And he would pray. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to be hearing from God. He said, everything I say, I hear the Father say. Everything I do, I do what I hear, what I see the Father do. Jesus was being led by the Spirit of God in everything he said and everything he did. And then he said, and the works that I do, they're not my works. They're the Father's. And he doeth the works. He said, if you don't believe me just because of what I'm saying. He said, believe me for the very works sake. Because it's the Father that works with me and confirms the word that I'm preaching with signs following. Hallelujah. We need to follow God. We need to do what the Word says to do. Thank you, we need to spend time in prayer. Mark 14, verse 21. And this is after he fed all these people. And they, had eat, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. That's a lot of people. He fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. He fed the women and children, too. I mean, there was more than 5,000. 
And straightway or immediately Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And so they got into a ship while he was sending the multitudes away. And then he went, then when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And he prayed there. And when the evening was coming, he was there alone. So he prayed there from late afternoon till way into the night. It says, but the ship was now in the midst of the middle of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, that's between 3 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the morning, the fourth watch. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea, walking on the water. And when they saw him, they thought it was a ghost. And they were afraid. And Jesus said, it's not, I'm not a ghost. I'm not a spirit. It's just me, Jesus. But he's walking on the water. How did, he, how did he get the power to walk on the water? He spent most of the night in prayer. He found out what God wanted him to do. Matter of fact, there was no more ships for him to, to get in him. They took the last boat out of town. And so the, God just told him to walk on the water. So he did. You know, if God tells you to do a thing, you can do a thing. Amen. God will enable you to do whatever he tells you to do. One time I did something on my own because I knew how to do that. And later when that thing failed, I said, Lord, why? The Lord said, I never told you to do that in the first place. You see, I never went to God to ask him about that. I just knew that I could do that. But I didn't know the future. And what happened in that situation is everybody quit buying those things that I was selling. In the whole country. Every person that sold those in the whole country went out of business. And God knew that, that that would happen because God knows the future. God knows things we don't know. <coughs> One time God told me, just do what I say. I know stuff you don't know. Amen. Say, God knows stuff. God knows stuff. I don't know. I don't know. So I need to see what God knows. I know I need to see what God knows. Hallelujah. And he'll give you words of knowledge and words yes. of wisdom. It's all by the Holy Ghost. It's by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every, every miracle Jesus did, unless he encouraged somebody's faith, but every miracle he did was operations of the gift of the Holy Ghost. You'll find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll read about the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And all the things Jesus did. One time he called a disciple and he said, I saw you sitting under this tree. He said, man, you must be a prophet. Well, he was a prophet, but he heard from God. Why do you hear from him? Because he spent lots of time in prayer. We became sensitive to the voice of God. Amen. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. It's the anointing that sets us free. It's the anointing that delivers us and gives us everything we need for life and godliness. It's through his great and precious promises. Yes. We've got to stand on by faith. Amen. But it's the anointing. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. I haven't even got to my main message yet. <laughs> and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. He'd go into to solitary places, Jesus did. I got to get alone with God to pray. Most of the time when I'm praying, I mean, it's in bed. When I first wake up in the morning, I'll lay in bed, usually for an hour praying. That's when the Lord speaks to me. When I'm praying. I stayed up last night past midnight trying to get a message. And I couldn't get nothing. So I, I think I went to bed. It was 12.30 or something last night. And I, and I thought, well, I said, Lord, I th I, the Lord always gives me messages in the morning. So I said, well, the Lord will give me a message in the morning. I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning this morning, and the word of the Lord just started coming to me. Started giving me this message. And then on my way over here, the Lord led me to write a book on the anointing. So I'm going to write a book on the anointing. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Thank you, Lord. So when it gets done, I'll get it printed, and then you guys can get a copy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. What, where are we at? 12. 12 and 13. 13. Okay. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued how long? All, All night. night in prayer to God. 
Jesus prayed all night. I mean, there was times. I mean, he spent lots of time in prayer. I mean, this time he went and he prayed all night. I remember one time, Kathy and I were at a minister's deal. And we were there. Till, we didn't get home until almost midnight by the time everything was done. Because all the meetings, they went to like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And then we went out and ate. And by the time we got home, it was midnight. And I was so tired. I mean, we've been up since like 6 in the morning. And I went to bed and I thought, well, at least I'll get some sleep. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't, don't sleep, pray. The Lord said, don't sleep, pray. I said, God, I'm really tired. I need to sleep. He said, don't sleep, pray. So I said, okay, Lord. I knelt down beside the bed and I began to pray. And the Lord gave me a vision. And, and, the, Lord, and the Lord talked to me until about 3 o'clock in the morning. Finally, I went to sleep about 3 o'clock in the morning. Then I woke up about 6. And the word of the Lord kept coming to me at 6 o'clock when I woke up. <laughs> Follow God. Spend time in prayer. Amen. Be obedient to the Lord. Yes. He wants to use you. He wants to show you. He wants by His anointing to be able to... He wants by His anointing to be able to teach you all things. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost to, to, to teach us all things that we might, that we might know, that understand the things of God. <coughs> Look with me to uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. I think we read this. John said, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth. Now he's talking about the Holy Ghost here. Abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. And he's talking to he's talking to the church. That's right. The Holy Ghost will teach you if you'll get if you'll get to a place where you'll spend time in the prayer and time in the word. The Holy Ghost will teach you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. Actually, the Bible says, without the without the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you really can't understand the things of God. We need the Holy Ghost yeah. to help teach us the things of God. You need the Holy Ghost to do the works that Jesus did. Jesus said at the end of Mark, he said, he said, preach to, to everybody. He said, those who believe and are, and are baptized or immersed shall be saved, but those who believe not shall be damned. But these signs shall follow them who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. So I can speak in tongues. I can speak in tongues. I mean, you have a right to, to receive the Holy Ghost once you come to Christ. The Holy Ghost is that anointing. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, Dunamis, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. For God was with him. So he prayed all night in prayer. Hallelujah. And then in Luke... In Luke uh, 9, 9, 28, 29, is when Jesus was going up to the Mount Transfiguration. And it came to pass about eight days after these things that he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. He took them with him to pray this time. He didn't go alone, but he took them with him to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. Yes. In other words, the anointing of God came upon him, and he shined. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, you can pray where the anointing comes on you so strong that the light of God is just all yes. John talked about a whole bunch of people when he came up that people didn't even recognize him because he had changed so much. And he said, people come up to me and say, I didn't even know this was you because he had changed. It was the light of God. When you co commit your life to Jesus Christ, the life of God comes in your heart. Yes. And then the light of God shines on you. Yes, thank you. God will use you to touch people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke 11, 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John did taught his disciples. We should, we should want to pray. His disciples wanted to pray. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus was praying all the time. They said, teach us to pray. And then look with me, Luke 18, verse 1. And this is Jesus talking. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always 
to pray and not to faint. Yes. Jesus said we should always pray and not faint. That means don't give up. That's right. That means hold strong. Pray, 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 pray. Why? Jesus did, and he was our example. Yes. Jesus was an example of us of us to do this thing. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And then you get in a place where you spend time in prayer. And I've got several of these out on the table. So you can grab one. I've only got about four or five of them, though. But you can grab one on your way out. But it's the anointing that breaks the open bond. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Turn with me to John chapter 14. We're going to read verses 15, 16, and 17. Thank you, Lord. This is Jesus talking. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, first John says, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. A lot of people say, I love God, and God knows my heart, but they're living for the devil. And their life shows that they're living for the devil. But God says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yes. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. In other words, the world can't receive the Holy Ghost. But the world can receive Christ. Yes. And then Christians can receive the Holy Ghost. The world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. But the world can receive Christ. And then God the Father gave the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost to Jesus. And He poured out the Holy Ghost on all flesh. And those who are in Christ can receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just like when Jesus breathed on His disciples. And he commanded them, receive the Holy Ghost. Now, they did it on the day of Pentecost. But on that day, they received the Spirit of Christ that made them alive unto God. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Spirit of life in Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Just like when Jesus breathed into Adam and Eve, and they became living souls. They became alive unto yeah, God. God did. And then on the day that they sinned and disobeyed God, he said, the day that you do that, you will surely die. Now that day they didn't die physically, but that day they were separated from Father God. The life of God that was in them through Je the, the breath of God, the Spirit of God that was in them through Jesus breathing into their nostrils. That left as soon as they got into sin. And that sin nature passed all of mankind, even unto today. Every person is born in sin. Every person is born a sinner. We're all born that way. But Jesus came to set us free and to make us whole. And then yes. he gave us the Holy Ghost that we can receive by faith. Hallelujah. So I can receive the Holy Ghost by faith. I can receive, receive the, Holy the Holy Ghost by faith. Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And on down in verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, talking about the, the Comforter here, but the Comforter which is... The Holy Ghost. Now, the word Holy Ghost is Holy Spirit. It's the same Greek word for ghost is spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Thank you, The Holy Lord. Spirit teach, is our teacher, folks. The Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, direct us. He will lead us into all truth. We've got to spend time with God in prayer. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In John 3, 27, in John 3, 27, this is John the Baptist. And Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest prophet that ever lived. He said there was no greater prophet that ever lived than John the Baptist. And John the Baptist said a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. And so that's why the world can't receive. I mean, back then, even before, even before Jesus ascended to the Father, nobody could receive the Holy Ghost except for Jesus because He was a pure and holy man. Amen. He was the second man in Adam. He Thank was the first man since Adam to be born alive with the life of God. The Amen. first man since Adam. That's right. And then until after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, no man had the life of God in them except for Jesus. 
Even though Old Testament saints and prophets didn't have the whole, the whole Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would be upon them, but He wouldn't be in them. Now, because Jesus has made us alive unto God, now we can receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. John 16, 7 and 8. This is Jesus talking again. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In other words, the Holy Spirit is dealing with all people in the world. Yes. All people. Hallelujah. In the world. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank Look with me to Acts chapter 19. We'll start with verse 1. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's traveling and he's in Corinth. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast unto Ephesus, now he was, Paul was going to Ephesus. And he found certain disciples. These were followers of Christ. They were disciples of Christ. So I'm a disciple. I'm a so, disciple. You know, Jesus, they, a lot of people think disciple means apostle. But Jesus, Jesus had many disciples, but he only had a few apostles. He had certain ones that he chose to be apostles of his disciples. So I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm a disciple. We are all disciples of Christ. If you know Jesus, if Jesus is your Lord, you are a disciple of Christ. So we found certain disciples. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? In other words, he knew they didn't receive the Holy Ghost when they believed. Because you've got to be born again before you can receive the Holy Ghost. So he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said to them, what then were you baptized? John the Baptist baptized with the water of repentance. Which is, brings us to salvation. But, G, but John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water of repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Glory to God. Glory. 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 Say the Holy Ghost. The Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Praise you, Father. Glory. Hallelujah. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said to them, well, what then were you baptized? And they said, and did John's baptism. And then said, Paul, truly, truly, verily, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, if they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized or immersed in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, <coughs> the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake in tongues and prophesied. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the men there were about 12. And then Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Just where Jesus is telling his disciples. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every person. He that believeth and is baptized, that's immersed into Jesus, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Then look with me to, to uh, Matthew chapter 3.11. We, we can just skip that. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. These were his disciples. This before he ascended to the Father. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father. <clears throat> Saith he, which you have heard of me. Knows, he said, I've been telling you about the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to send him down here in a little bit. 
Jesus was getting ready to go up to heaven. So he said, wait in Jerusalem, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Glory he said, in a little while, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. If you go on down there in chapter 1, you'll see that he said that... that uh, Going down to, to chapter uh, verse uh, 8 of chapter 1. And they asked, when will be the signs and the, te and the seasons and things? But he said, but he said, he said, but you shall receive power. This is dunamis. This is the same power that Jesus was anointed with. Dunamis. Miraculous power. Matter of fact, you remember the woman with the issue of blood? Jesus was just walking along. And she came and touched, grabbed the hem of his garment. For she had said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. And she fought through the crowd and got to Jesus. And she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, dunamis, it says virtue. He said virtue, that word virtue is a Greek word dunamis. It's miraculous power. He said dunamis flowed out of my body. He said, I felt something. It was dunamis flow out of my body. Somebody touched me. Yes. Of course, there was lots of people touching him, but this was the only person that touched him by faith. And when she touched him by faith, immediately the dunamis power of God flowed out of Jesus and healed her body. Hallelujah. Jesus said, and you shall receive dunamis, miraculous power, after that the Holy Ghost has come Glory, upon you. Yes. And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem yes. and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. One day Paul was praying. I mean, I mean, Je uh, Peter was praying up on the roof of his house. Why do you think he went on the roof? To be in a solitary place. Amen. And so he got up on the roof to pray. And while he was praying... The Holy God, the God showed him a vision of this sheep coming down with all these unclean animals in it. And he said, take and eat. He said, those are unclean and those are common. He said, I've never touched any unclean thing, any common thing. And God did that three times. And then finally God said, when I call something clean, you don't call it unclean. When I say eat, eat. And then he said, there's men at your door right now. You see, Peter had a problem with anybody who weren't Jews. Even though God, Jesus had told him, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all people. He still had a problem with doing that. He just wanted to go to Jerusalem and Judea. He said, go to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, none to the uttermost parts of the earth. But Peter had a problem with that because he thought they were unclean, the Gentiles. And so Peter just heard what the first part of what Jesus said. And so Jesus, God had to get his attention. Because he had some Gentiles that wanted to be saved. And so he got his attention, told him to go over there and preach the gospel to them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then turn me to Acts chapter 10. And this is Peter preaching to those Gentiles. Acts chapter 10. We'll start with verse 38. And we're going on down to where they got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, God will save a person to fill them with the Holy Spirit if they really are hungry for God. Amen. And this guy, this guy, this was a centurion. He was a Roman soldier. And he was hungry for God. And he prayed to God all the time. And, and, and this angel appeared to him and said, these, these, your prayers and alms have went up as a memorial before God. And he told and an angel, this angel told him to go find Peter. And then Peter's preaching to these people because he went with them because God said they're down at the front door. They sent people to, to go find him. And so here they are preaching. He's preaching to them. In verse 38, he says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, dunamis, miraculous power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Another place says that he actually 
500 people saw him at one time after he rose from the dead. And showed him openly not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, and to us who did eat with and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be a judge of the, the living and the dead. The quick means living. And he gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions or deliverance of sins. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell upon them all, which heard the word. You see, as soon as he was preaching, they were receiving everything he preached. So they were receiving Christ as he was preaching. They were making Jesus Lord of their life right then. And then, then they did that, and they were hungry for God. If you're really hungry for God, God will fill you. Amen. Jesus said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Yes. If you're really hungry for the Holy Ghost and will really seek God and not, and not give up, you will receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which had believed in other words, these were ones who had got saved to believe what he was. I mean, these were other circumcision of the circumcision. That's the Jewish people. These Jewish people that were went, went with him, which believed, were astonished. They were shocked. I mean, because these were Gentiles, these were dogs that God poured out the Holy Ghost upon. <coughs> Hallelujah. They were astonished that as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Holy Ghost has been poured out to all flesh, to everybody. Now, Peter preached this on the day of Pentecost. After they got filled with the Holy Ghost, he said, We are not drunk as one with wine as you suppose, but this is that spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men will see, have dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And upon my handmaidens, even on the slaves, will prophesy in those days. Both men and women. And here Peter now, he's preaching to these Gentiles. And the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, verse 46, and magnify God. Then Peter said, Peter, can a man forbid? Now they had not even been baptized in water yet. <laughs> they got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost right then. They hadn't even been baptized in water. You don't have to be baptized in water to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. You received the Holy Ghost. I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 12 years old. I didn't get baptized in water until I was 16 years old. I already been called to preach before I ever got baptized in water. I was already anointed by the Holy Ghost before I got baptized in water. The gifts of the Spirit were always in, already in operation in my life before I got baptized in water. You know what water baptism does? It gets you wet. That's what it does. But it shows forth what happened on the inside of you. When yes. Jesus came into your heart, oh, he made you a new creature. He cut away your old nature. Yeah. He Thank gave you a new nature. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to put off the old man and put on the new. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, it will enable you to do the works that Jesus did. Yes. But you've got to do the works Jesus did. Yes. You want to do that. You've got to spend time in prayer. Yes. Yeah. You've got to spend time with God. Yes. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is there for us. And God wants to use it. He wants to use it to help us Thank to preach Lord. the gospel to all flesh. Thank you, He Lord. wants to confirm his word with signs following. And Jesus said, these signs shall follow them to believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. Cast out devils. They shall cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs fall. Yes. Right. Well, and we can read that through the book of Acts. And you know, we're, we're in the same time. It's, things haven't changed. God's never changed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God wants to show himself mighty in these end times just as much as he ever has been. God has always done miracles. God has always touched people. I heard somebody say, well, if, if miracles happened every day, they wouldn't be a miracle. That's not true. 
God did miracles every day. Yeah, hallelujah. Every Glory. day. When, when the children of Israel, when they were out in the wilderness, God poured out manna from heaven every day for 40 years, except for one day. Except the day he didn't pour it out on the day of Sabbath. But every other day he did. And the thing about that, it's like they couldn't eat more than he, if they took, they couldn't collect more than one day's work. Because if they collected extra, it would always spoil, it would go rotten and have worms in it. Except for the one day they could collect extra because of the Sabbath. Then that food lasted. Isn't that a miracle? I mean, it's a miracle anyhow that he pours out manna from heaven, right? You know, he, he caused them, he caused their clothes never to wear out. Do you know God can do that? Their shoes never wore out. God can cause that to happen. I mean, if you really trust God, a lot of times we say, well, you know, I don't know, we're all, Jesus said, don't worry about what you'll eat or what you'll drink, what you'll wear. God is there for you. If you'll put first God first in your life, Amen. God will provide for you. That's what Jesus said. See first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Trust in God. Believe God. He's our provider. He's our, the all-sufficient one. He is more than enough. He cares about us. He said he cares about the birds. He, he said, haven't you seen the flowers? I mean, they're, they're dressed better than Solomon in all his glory. He said, yet yeah, they just pass away the next day. They're just here for a little while and they're gone. God cares about us. He wants yes, to hold us. He wants to take care of us. He yes, wants to meet yes, your needs. Yes, but we've got to trust in Him. We've got to put Him first in our life. In every area of our life. If you put God first, then He's, then he's Lord over that area of your life. If you put God first in every area of your life, then God's Lord in that area. Put God first. Amen. Trust God. Believe God. Do what the Word says. Receive the Holy Ghost. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, Praise you, Father. Jesus was talking to his disciples. And he told them, everyone who asks receives. He said, if anyone asks for the Holy Ghost, God will give it to them. Amen. Thank now, you. The word ask there is a real strong word. It's not just, Lord, will you give me that? It's, it's, your, it's a word that means you ask by faith, you hold on, you refuse to let go. You refuse to be denied. I remember when I received the Holy Ghost, it was a long time ago. I was 12 years old. Yeah, that was a few years back. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> 32, 42, 52. Okay, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. That was 46 years ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> when I was 12 years old, I was out here at the campgrounds. Of, uh, the Assembly of God campgrounds out here at camp. It was at youth camp I was at. And I went forward to receive the Holy Ghost. I think it was 9 o'clock. And I, I received the Holy Ghost until about 11 o'clock. Took me two hours to receive the Holy Ghost. But, but for the first hour, I had people trying to help me. Mm -hmm. I had one on one side saying, Hold on! I had another one on the other side saying, Let go! I had another one stand in front of me saying, Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah! <laughs> none of that worked. The holding on or letting go or saying hallelujah, hallelujah, none of that worked. But finally, I, I kept giving God a little bit more time. And finally, I got to the place where I said, Lord, I'm not leaving here until I receive the Holy Ghost. If, if I have to stay here all night, I'm not leaving until I receive the Holy Ghost. And as soon as I got that attitude in my heart, immediately the Holy Ghost came upon me and I started speaking in tongues. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your Father. Thank you, Lord. But we have to have that kind of attitude. I'm not leaving until I get it. That's right. I'm not, not going to be denied. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank Lord you, God. Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, honor, Lord. I love you, Lord. Praise I magnify you, Lord. Jesus. You, Lord. Hallelujah. you are worthy, Lord. Glory There's one more scripture I want to look at. Do you have permission to do that? Yeah. Uh, glory to Thank God. Thank you, Father. You haven't have let me find it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's a... Uh, Here. 
Hold on just a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 4. John chapter 7. That's where it's at. Verse 37, 38, and 39. And in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, that's get saved, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But he spake, he spake of the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, which they that believe that are saved on him should receive. Say, I should receive. I should receive. The Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so Jesus, they couldn't receive the Holy Ghost because the world can't receive it. But once you're saved, you can receive the Holy Ghost. And we should receive the Holy Ghost. Jesus said we should receive the Holy Ghost. I mean, it's God's intention that you have the Holy Ghost. Because, because He wants you to have the power, the dunamis, the miraculous power, to do the works that He calls you to do. He wants you to be able to be led by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. And he also said in that same chapter, if that same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, that same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The anointing. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. That's my message. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to you. Anybody here need prayer? Yes, sir.